Hey everyone, it's me, Mewn Buster Green, an anime YouTuber who reviews a lot of anime, and today I'm going to be talking about a classic anime called Razafon, which I hope you guys have seen. If not, this will kind of be an introduction to it. Before I get started, I need to let you guys know that I currently need, unfortunately, 911 watch hours in the next year to get monetized. I failed YouTube Power Day, and so the amount of hours I need to get has gone back up. Gah. So, it's the weekend, if you guys do watch my stuff for a few hours. Hopefully, if 911 of you could watch my stuff for one hour, I will get monetized. That's kind of where it stands. So, good luck with that, guys. This was originally my intro to the other video, but it ended up being such a long video that I think it's its own video now. Go figure. Anyway, so let's discuss Razafon, and if we're discussing Razafon, we can't discuss it without discussing Studio Bones itself. Studio Bones was a splinter offshoot of Sunrise that originally formed when disillusioned animators who worked on the Cowboy Bebop movie decided that we cannot go back to making baby dinosaur super robot animes for kids after this. So they all left and they became Studio Bones, and Razafon was arguably the first anime that put them on the map and really left a nice feeling in everyone's mouths and, you know, gave everyone that satisfying post-Evangelion entree they were after. Now, when we talk about Razafon, I think Razafon gets a really bad rap because, if we're going to be real, Razafon is the first post-Evangelion anime that learned lessons from Evangelion. And at the time, it felt extremely derivative of Evangelion, earning it also the first anime to get the title of being an Eva clone. Now, don't get me wrong. It wasn't the first one to get accused of that. Brainpowered had got accused of it first, but then Razafon came out and everyone agreed Razafon deserved it way more than Brainpowered did. Um, but me personally, I don't think Razafon is a clone of Evangelion. I think it's just an anime that came after it that uses a lot of the same ingredients. Brainpowered tackles the 1990s collapse of the family structure, and so does Evangelion. And so does Razafon, but whereas Brainpowered is kind of like a mix of the original Gundam and Aura Battler Dunbine tackling contemporary issues mixed with Yoshiyuki Tamino Insane, Razafon, meanwhile, it's, it's, it's something different. Now, let's be real, it does have a lot in common with Evangelion. If you want an older woman commanding a military army who also has like a mom cougar thing going on with the main mecha pilot, it's got that. If you want antisocial goth girls who the main character wants to fuck, but also doesn't know he's loosely related to them, it's got that. If you want otherworldly horror where people are trapped inside things that look kind of like planets, but they're small, it's got that. If you want scary monsters that are kind of aliens and kind of statues and kind of hard to figure out, it's got that too. Now, the comparison between Razafon and Eva, it's kind of true and it's kind of not true. I think Razafon has enough new content and topics that you absolutely shouldn't ignore it or just write it off. And I'm going to do some myth busting here because there's a lot of myths between the relationship between Razafon and Eva. The first myth I got to bust is just that it is casually written off as an Eva clone. And there's this like internet urban legend that the reason it became an Evangelion clone is that it was literally like made by Izabuchi and Anno together. Here's the thing, Izabuchi and Anno, they worked together on Char's Counterattack. Izabuchi did all the mecha designs and Anno was like a key animator for like some of the cool shots. Now, playing out the urban legend myth, according to the myth, Anno and Izabuchi were basically planning out Evangelion together. And because they planned out Evangelion together, they had all these similar concepts they wanted to use and they basically both wrote the same story from the same like brainstorming session, but then that same story split into two different stories, and Anno's story was Eva, and Izabuchi's was Rasapon. Maybe this happened, maybe this didn't, but it is a ridiculous coincidence since they are so well acquainted with each other, but the reality is it's not a coincidence, and the reality is it's not a clone. It's more like it's a second act with a lot of the same crew. The thing of it is, Izabuchi didn't directly work with Anno on Evangelion, but he and Anno were well acquainted enough that some people would describe them as drinking buddies. Izabuchi did want to work on Evangelion and he did uh, interview to be a mecha designer, 
but none of his designs were ultimately used in the show. Also, Mitsuo Iso, writer and key animator for Evangelion, directed several episodes of Razafan, and Yoji Enokido wrote scripts for both of the shows. So I think since they had the same script writer, that did a lot to making them feel similar. Takeshi Honda also animated on both shows, and Gainax animated a few of the episodes where Bones was short-staffed. And lastly, ADV dug both of the shows into English and used a lot of the same voice actors. So, the Evangelion Razafon criticism, it's like very overblown, but it's not completely without merit. It's like if Evangelion is a delicious pizza that comes in a variety of flavors, Razafon is the calzone made from most of the same ingredients, only flipped upside down, and now you have to dip it in tomato sauce because it's a much larger and stranger object. I think it's more like the fact that Razafon existed in a post-Evangelion world, the show's pace and editing took a lot from it, and since it used a lot of the same crew, the crew wanted to continue exploring the themes and paths they had started in Evangelion, only they took them down more exotic paths because they had already been down these paths once before. Now, there's also a lot of differences between Evangelion and Razafon 2. Like, if you pop them both into the same universe, Aito Kamino would have completely kicked Shinji and Yukari's ass. He probably would have kicked his dad's ass too, and he probably would have fucked Asuka. Because if we're being real, even though Razafon has a lot of common with Eva, and even if it was even made by a lot of the same people, aside from that, it's only about as similar to Eva as it is to any anime, or even Megazone 23. Like, Megazone 23 pioneered the fake world concept and adapted it from philosophy into sci-fi. And then we also have Esca Flamini and Magic Knight Rare posting magic statue type giant robots before this show did. But the thing of it is, Razafon isn't an Eva clone. It's an Eva flavored riding reboot. Because the title of the show Razafon is the combination of three different words. The Ra is from riding, the X is from sex, and the F phone is from a sax F phone. Saxophone. Which I know it's not spelled the same way, but Japanese people, you, you gotta give some leeway here. All right, sorry about that. But so then, what is this sexy writing saxophone show now? So let's go back to writing. Yusha Writing, the brave writing, known to most people as just writing. Writing is an early Sunrise Super Robot show that dropped in 1975. Now, Raiden is a really interesting super robot. He's not the first giant super robot that was Tetsujin, and he's definitely a reaction to the rise in popularity of Mazmer and Getter Robo that happened in the early 70s. He is the first giant robot developed by Sunrise, though, and he's big enough that he's randomly grouped together with a group of super robots called the Shogun Warriors, which was the result of a bizarre 1970s Marvel comic when Marvel briefly had the rights to license him. He's also sometimes incorrectly grouped with the Takara Brave robots of the 1990s like Mike Guyon and Gal Geiger, but this is a complete mistake and the only reason he's grouped with them is because both of their shows start with the word Brave. Riding is actually more fondly remembered as being the first super robot entirely devised from mysticism and not sci-fi science. Raiden was also one of the first sentient pilotable mechas, which, you know, includes him with like Massacre and Getter Robo and all those. It's also one of the first series directed by young Yoshiyuki Tamino, and this series was the first time he teamed up with Yoshikazu Yazuhiko to do character designs. Also, Raiden is furthermore also incorrectly grouped with the Tadao Nagahama Super Robot Trinity of Combat Review, Voltes V, and Dynamos, since Nagahama did step in as director for the second season after Tamino left. So, anyway, so back to Razafon. Razafon is pretty much just writing, plus that special Eva post-apocalyptic, post-1990s existentialism sauce. Like, if you boil it down, Evangelion is just... Space Runaway Ideon plus Matt from Ultraman with that Eva sauce. And so then if you compare them together, Razafon and Riding are both shows about semi-super robot-like entities that are actually huge stone statues that fight against other mythical, mystological stone statues who are their enemies. And it turns out the main character, whose name starts with an A, is fighting against these Mulians. 
Now, then later there's a twist reveal where it turns out that A is actually a Molina himself. And both shows consist of the pilot melting into the, the cockpit of the statue robot. And both titular giant robots are sentient, intelligent beings. Relatively resembling a bird or having bird-like elements. But also having elements in line of like an ancient Egyptian pharaoh. And a special ability to shoot arrows. Did I miss anything? Oh yeah, Riding also had a super stupid attack where it transformed into a giant bird. And instead of that, Razvan instead transforms into a giant Ayato. Does that equivalate? I don't know. Now, funny enough, as huge as I am a Razafan fan, not that big of a riding fan. I've never seen riding. It's hard to get a hold of it from because it's from the 70s and no one's fan subbed it or like formally released it. My first exposure to riding was in the game Super Robot Wars MX, where they really played up the fact that riding and Razafan were brothers. Now, I also might have imagined this, but did they have a double God Arrow team up attack in that game? Or did they just like imply that in the advertising? So anyway, you start with writing and you add the letter X from the word sex. And surprisingly a good deal of Razvan is poignated on sex. There's a major fuck Mary kill dynamic with Ayato like spending a lot of the series deciding like who he's going to fuck Mary or kill. It's that X factor that also kind of made Evangelion work. And lastly, the last part of Razafon is the Ephone. Because it turns out Razafon and a number of other mecha in the show are strongly implied to be out of control giant musical instruments, which is an interesting and fascinating take on the genre. Now this kind of bleeds into its own thing and it really mixes together with the Razafon soundtrack, which I would definitely consider among the top 10 best anime soundtracks ever created. It's composed by veteran piano player Ichiko Hashimoto, and I don't know if she's still alive, but she really hasn't worked in the industry like since this. She was most active in the 80s. But yeah, in conclusion, Razafon is its own thing. It's a reboot of writing with a lot of the elements that made Evangelion work added into it. But funny enough, uh, after Razafon, writing actually got its own remake, and it also had a remake in the 90s, but both of these remakes kind of didn't follow what made the original writing work, and ironically, Razafon did. It's funny, I only ever hear people say good things about the original writing and Razafon, and definitely not the two writing remakes. But leave a comment if you disagree with me on that, because I'd be completely willing to watch them if I could find them, but they bombed, so nowadays they're really hard to track down. By the way, I'm also currently working on a best episode of Razafon video, which this was originally the introduction for. But since I went so off tangent with this whole reboot discussion, uh, this is now its own video. So uh, if I finish this video first, look forward to that other one. All right, thanks guys. Good night.